All right, the cold weather and the increase in COVID cases present two specific challenges to a Kansas City nonprofit, but the community is trying to answer that call as well. All new this morning, 41 Action News reporter Charlie Keegan joins us with this story on After the Harvest. Pretty incredible the work that they do, Charlie. It really is, and let's walk you through the two challenges that this organization is facing right now. We talk about the cold weather means that farmers in our area can't grow produce to give to after the harvest, or less less produce anyway. And then number two, that rise in COVID cases means that after the harvest has kind of cut back on the number of volunteers it has, which means there was nobody here to come to the Overland Park Farmers Market on Saturday to collect any excess produce. But then a vendor stepped up. Okay, here we go. The Overland Park Farmer's Market. Well, that's our best seller as far as the curds. Keeps David Hemi busy. It's a very nice aged cheddar. Since 2014. You have a great day. Vendors here hand any excess items over to after the harvest. The group sends those fruits and veggies to food banks who give them to people in need. The nonprofit says it serves three purposes. Reduces food waste, fights food insecurity, and promotes good nutrition. That's what I love about this place. You're not going to get higher quality. Because of COVID, after the harvest, has cut down the number of volunteers who glean produce in fields, like in this footage from the summer, or who collect donations from farmer's markets. They really run the spectrum of, um, of ages and backgrounds, and so we just want to make sure um, any of them who might be more vulnerable, we're, we're doing our best to, to keep them safe. I just wondered if you had anything for after the harvest. This weekend, Hemi, the cheese vendor, took the reins. Well, I tell you what, really appreciate this. He gathered squash, lettuce, and eggs from his fellow vendors, then delivered the goods to Shawnee Community Services, which will get it to people in need. They were able to step up and really help complete this mission. So that's, it's great to have that partnership. It's about, you know, what, what we bring. Hemi shies away from taking credit, but likes to think he's making a difference. I'd like some, yeah. like... Hemi is making a big difference there. And uh, he's obviously kind of taking care of that one challenge for After the Harvest, but After the Harvest is hoping you can help with that second challenge. They actually have to pay uh, different produce companies to truck in uh, fresh vegetables and fruits during the winter months so that they can supply food banks with that fresh produce. And so Lindsay and Taylor, they're going to be launching a, a fundraiser next Tuesday for Giving Tuesday to really bring in those donations and make sure the food keeps coming to the Kansas City area during those long winter months. Charlie, talk about how far those trucks make this drive. It's really incredible. These trucks come from all over the United States, Lindsay, and of course, mostly during the wintertime from the southern states. Florida grows more than just oranges. The, the send potatoes and onions up our way during these winter months. If you want to learn more about the Bucks for Trucks fundraiser, mm -hmm. just head on over to KSHB.com. We've got information up there right now. Gosh, just a whole new layer of need for people in our community right now. Charlie Keegan reporting live for us this morning. Charlie, thank you very much.